Hi everybody, it's Anne. Welcome back to Art on the Creek. If this is your first time here, welcome, welcome. My home studio in Parker is open to everyone and there's plenty of room. So I'm glad you've joined us today. You know, it is Sunday, so that means it's time for a review. And today I've got a very exciting unboxing for you. As I'm making this intro, I've already unboxed it, but I'm gonna show you what's in the box. So I'll give you a sneak peek. I was contacted by Graby, the art supply company, and I am thrilled that they wanted me to review this for you. So we're gonna do a review and a little bit of demo. Okay, so here is, you've probably seen this on Amazon too. Here's their 100% cotton watercolor paper. These brushes, and I will show them to you when we open them in the video. These are really, really nice. Look at this packaging, isn't that fun? And then a really beautiful set of watercolors. So all three things, are you ready? Let's go open the box and have some fun. Here we go. It's always so fun to get mail. And here's how it came. It uh, looks like it uh, suffered a little bit of worse for the wear for the, the shipping company, but everything inside was in great condition and I was very happy to receive it. So the set that I got, the, the items that I got rather, include nine brushes, a beautiful set of watercolors and this 100% cotton watercolor pad. I'm so excited about that because you know me, I'm always looking for supplies that are easy to use, fun to get you started in art, and of a decent quality. And as I'm doing these voiceover, I've already played with these extensively. In fact, I'm almost out of that pad. I've had so much fun with this, you guys. These are student grade supplies, but I will tell you something. I would buy this again. These are so fun to use and they're so easy. The only thing I knew about these watercolors when I, when I said, yeah, I would go ahead and do this is that they came in a metal tin. And oh, my X-Acto blade got stuck in the lid. My goodness, let me get that fixed. There we go, that's better. I don't wanna cut myself here on, on camera. I know that uh, you guys know that I'm kind of clumsy <laughs> and I just put a new blade in there, so maybe I didn't get it in all the way. Anyway, back to this wonderful uh, art supply here. The box is really nice on the watercolors and I know that that seems kind of silly, but I really love packaging. So look at this cute little container. Okay, so it's a little drawstring bag and it comes with an eraser and a little sharpener. Oh, that's convenient, I've never seen that. So all of these things were such a surprise to me because I thought it was only going to be a tin of watercolor, but okay, so I got that pen and it says Superior on it, which means, I hope, that it's made by Superior Paints because they are the ones that do uh, the Paul Rubens and I love those. You know, those are the ones that I recommend this year for my, uh, my beginning students and I'm gonna give you a spoiler right now. I would also recommend this gravy set for uh, anyone, anyone. Look at this set, look at this travel brush. Oh my gosh, it's, okay. I got ahead of myself there, but it is so nice. I mean, it feels luxurious. I like that it screws together the lid and it does have a hole at the end of the lid so that you can uh, just put your brush away wet. Now let's get into this beautiful tin. It opens lovely. It, it doesn't feel wonky at all. It feels very stable. You have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then the inside comes out for 13 mixing wells, which is really nice. The paints all look very nice. They're half pans. And then what's this little guy? Oh, this is a little graphite stick, and I love that it's got a cap on it. I am so pleased to have that. The graphite doesn't come off on your fingers. And that's why we have the pencil sharpener. And look, it fits right in there. I am so excited about that. And then you have the little pouch so that that beautiful travel brush can fit in too. And there's more. Ah, oh, little swatch sheet. I love that. I'm all about swatch sheets. And look at this little, uh, a little pad of paper. Now, here's the thing. I'm so excited. <laughs> that little pad of paper is so cool. I'm not sure that it is 100% cotton because the texture is a little bit different than the than the watercolor pad. Um, and the paint does kind of sit on top of it a little, but after I've used it, it works so well. Oh, I'm just, I'm just thrilled. I'm just thrilled. So let me get the wrapping off of this eraser and we will move on to open more things. The first thing that I'm most excited to test is this pen. Ah, it's a flexible nib. Okay, I love these because you can get really dynamic lines from them. The cap posts on there just fine. I'm just clumsy. 
And let's take a look here. I'm trying to see if it is permanent and it doesn't say anything on the box. So let's just do a test. Let's just write on here and then we'll paint some water on top of it and we'll see if the ink is permanent. Let's just use the travel brush, which I love the length of it. It fits in my hand so beautifully and it's weighted exactly perfectly. Hey, look at that. No smudging whatsoever. And I didn't let that sit very long at all. So you can see the water on there, the little bit of reflection that we're getting in the light, I hope. And there is no smudging. So hooray, it's a permanent liner. So I'm going to just set that bag aside and let's see. I think the first thing I'd like to do is go to the brushes. So let's get those open back to my trusty exacto knife here <laughs> and let's see what all is in here i'm really excited about these brushes because on the website they looked slightly different they didn't look like they were uh, uh, regular round brushes i think they're they're more like a quill brush which is exciting because i really don't have a lot of them there are nine brushes in here okay i know it said that on the container but when you put them out right in front of you like that, that's a lot of brushes. So let me tell you a little bit about the brushes here while I'll speed up this section where I'm opening them. These brushes are synthetic squirrel hair and they're crafted from nylon, which is chosen for its water absorption properties that closely resembles real squirrel hair. And as I can attest, that is true because after using them, they were very soft and they did feel like an authentic squirrel brush, which is my favorite fiber. So I really like the brushes too. As part of their commitment to cruelty-free practices, and minimizing their impact on the environment and wildlife, Graby has made sure to exclude animal hair from their production. The handles of the brushes are meticulously fashioned from wood. So these are really very nice and the ferrules are all wound very securely. I like that too because sometimes I've had quill brushes where the little wires kind of poke your hand sometimes. The brushes range in size from a zero to an eight and quill sizing is just a little bit different than uh, traditional round sizing. One of my favorite brushes to work with is a number eight round by Princeton Neptune. And that one is probably about the size of a number two quill brush. And I said traditional sizing, but I really should have just said round brush sizing. They're just a little bit different. Um, so once you get accustomed to those numbers, then you know, you'll know exactly which brush you need to pick up. And l that big papa, the number eight is so fun to use you guys it holds so much paint and you can use background washes you can make beautiful leaves there's just so much you can do with this wide selection of brushes opening the watercolor paper now it has a slight texture not quite as textured as the little pad there the little pad texture is almost more i would say linear kind of like basket weave ish and the one on the pad the 100% cotton one is more like orange peel. So I'm very happy about that. I am so ready to try these. Let's put these in here for just a minute. I want to use this travel brush because I really like the way it feels. It's just that metal handle is just so beautiful. I didn't think I would really like using a travel brush unless I was out and about, but this one is weighted so nicely that I really just can't wait. So now let's open up these, uh, these paints here and I'll tell you the colors that we have. I'm just using that travel brush to just put a drop of water on each paint. Uh, you could use a spray bottle or what have you to, uh, to get your paints prepped. I don't know if this is necessary, but I thought it couldn't hurt to try. So going in order of the order that I'm putting the water droplets on, I'll tell you the names of the colors. First we have white, then lemon yellow, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, Rose Matter, Sap Green, Ultramarine, Prussian Blue, Royal Purple, Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, and a Neutral Tint. Now when I wrote my colors down, I kind of thought that neutral tint was a Payne's Gray because I went ahead and I labeled my swatch chart before I had the exact color information. So my bad on that, but it's okay because we will just persevere and we will enjoy these colors because let me tell you they are so vibrant and so bright and they went down beautifully. You know I have tested a lot of paint sets and I can tell you from a lot of experience that this particular set is going to be really easy to use. It re-wets really beautifully. The colors go down sheer yet vibrantly. They mix beautifully. There's some good color separation. I say that from real experience and it's my honest opinion. 
I really love the colors. I think they came out so well, you guys. So take a look here now. I'm going to mix warm primaries and cool primaries. Let's do the cool ones first. And now I'm just doing this visually. I'm not, I don't have any pigment information. So these are the colors that just look cool to me. And I love the vibrancy of this rainbow of colors on the color wheel. Now here's the warm primary mixes. Look at how beautiful these gem tones are. I mean, I, I just feel like if you were to have this set, you would use it again and again, which is exactly what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be using it again and again. And here's what I always like to do to try and mix uh, some grays and skin tones. And I didn't have any trouble with that at all. We'll take a look at that again. But first, look at this little elephant. I mixed the gray. And for this gray, I used the Burnt Sienna and what they're calling Prussian Blue because visually it looked more like an ultramarine. But I put a touch of rose matter in there to get some pink on her little head and on her feet, in her mouth, and her ears. And I just love the granulation. I love the way that the watermarks uh, made some nice texture in her skin. I really had fun playing with that. So I'm sorry I don't have the footage. I wish I did. And I used the pen to sketch her originally and do the details on the birds. And you guys, it was so easy to use. And I love the dynamic lines you can get with a flexible nib. So if you are a cartoon artist or you like drawing anything, any character at all, those kinds of pens are really nice. And when it's a permanent liner, it's so good to use. So these are the colors I was labeling on my own label system. So don't pay attention to the names here, but um, I, this is the slower version of what I've mixed. So you guys can kind of look up close and see how the paints act on the paper. I'm working on creating skin tones. I really like to do that just to make sure um, burnt sienna and purple is a good mix for this one. And then I used all three primaries. I think that's the, the warm primaries is what my note says there for the, the one under my, uh, my finger there on the left. So by adjusting the ratios of those colors, you really can come up with a good range of skin tones. And I love how soft that gray is. I mean, this elephant is just too darn cute. This, this little pad of paper here is about three inches by almost five inches. So it's just, um, well, I'm sorry, maybe more like four inches. It's about the size of a small note card. And I just thought it was so nice and so convenient if you were traveling, taking this with you and just wanted to record a little moment of your trip or of your day if you're waiting in the car to pick your kids up and you had a water brush with you and you just wanted to paint just something really tiny or maybe on your lunch break at work you could use it it's just so incredibly portable it all fits into that little tote bag and it comes with everything you need the pencil the eraser the sharpener the small pad of paper and a brush it's just really really great and now i want to take a look at this paper. I've heard really good things about this paper. So I'm super excited because I am always very, very interested in trying to get a good quality paper that is not going to break the bank. And I got to tell you, this one is really nice. I thought, well, what should I paint? I'll just do some blueberries here because I haven't used the purples yet. So I wanted to see how they played together on the paper and so nicely. I mean, this is great. I just thought with this little close up drawing of blueberries, that maybe we could play with some leaves and figure out some shadow tones. And I really like how everything worked. Nothing was difficult. The paper cooperated very well. It let me lift off. It let me add on top. And same is true here. I thought, okay, with those brushes, I think for Christmas, this will be so nice. So I'm going to try and do a stylized poinsettia here. And I really enjoyed doing this. I used the cool and the warm reds, mixed in some of the greens, let the colors mix and meld and the yellow in the center. And then I went around it with that liner pen and I just loved it. I love the way that turned out. And so I want to use that pencil again to do a drawing. I really enjoy that pencil, by the way. I thought, well, fall is here, so let's do a maple leaf. And I'm just kind of dropping colors in. You can see the palette is always a different color when I show you my next demo because I had so much fun playing with this set. I went through so many pages on this palette. I'm using the neutral tint for the shadow just to lift the leaf off the surface a little bit and I had so much fun with this. These quill brushes are so easy to use and they have such a beautiful point. So for those three things that's the that's what I came up with with these with these paints and I thought you know I just I can't stop. I want to do one more. <laughs> So let's do a lemon. I tried to use all of the colors in this set for my demo for you guys because I was so pleased with how everything worked and these quill brushes really are a dream to use. I've never really used quill brushes. I'm always about round brushes or stroke brushes, but these were truly 
really simple to use and I love the amount of paint that they hold. I love that they're so easy to get into tight spaces despite their big size. And I love making leaves. Look at this. Boom, you're done. Just one little stroke and you can make the leaf any dimension, any shape that you want. You know, you've got all those different sizes, nine different brushes to choose from, and I'm just so thrilled. You can splatter really well with them, which is something that I'm always looking for a good splatter brush because sometimes when you splatter, the splatters come out a little bit wonky, but here with this shape and size of brush, they worked out just fine. And did I cover my work area? No, I always forget to do that. <laughs> but I got to tell you guys, this has just been the funnest set that I have tried. And I'm, I mean, I got to tell you, I have tried a lot of entry level watercolor supplies to try and find that unicorn out there that really makes it so easy because you know when I first started watercolor I've been an artist nearly all my life but when I first started watercolor uh, someone recommended wood pulp paper to me and uh, some paints that really had hardly any pigment and I was so frustrated and I thought I'm never going to get this I don't like it I don't understand it it's not fun Art needs to be fun. It, it shouldn't be stressful. And if you're looking for fun, if you're looking for a good way to fill your day with creativity, a time out from the hustle and bustle, really fun supplies that all fit together, this Gravy Watercolor Collection, all their supplies are so nice. Here's my lemon that I painted with this set. The color wheels are back there too. The blueberries were so easy to do, the poinsettia, and finally that maple leaf. And don't forget that little elephant down there. You guys, I love this set so much. I hope that I've piqued your curiosity a little bit if you're looking for something fun and easy to use. And all you have to do is look down in the comments. I've got a pinned comment there. And there are links to the squirrel hair paintbrush set, the watercolor pad, and that 12 half pan deluxe travel set all down there in a pinned comment. And they're right available on Amazon. Wrapping things up with a little bit of housekeeping here. Full disclosure, Gravy sent these supplies to me. I didn't pay for them, but I would. I think these are really good supplies, and when these run out, I will be buying more. I hope you guys enjoy your artful week, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye now.